Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about sleeping following rib fractures or rib injuries. This is a really tough one because I've worked with a lot of folks with this type of recovery and they're always painful. So I hope in this video I can give you some ideas, some tips, some tricks, some tools that can help you get a little more comfortable so you can get some restful sleep following those types of injuries. So first things first, I recognize that early on in a rib fracture recovery, just about nothing is comfortable, and that includes trying to sleep. So in this video, I'm gonna cover some things. They may or may not work for you, but definitely give it a try and know that over time, it does get better. So if you're in the beginning of that healing process and you're getting really frustrated, I hear you, I've been there, I understand that it is miserable. But some of these things may be helpful in getting you a little bit more comfortable and certainly can help throughout that length of that recovery process. For most people, it's a solid six to eight weeks before they're feeling a little bit more like themselves following these types of injuries. There are several different types of rib fractures and rib injuries that I'm going to be covering. Most of them are gonna be from about a crack, so a small crack in a rib, all the way up to displaced rib fractures. And rib fractures can occur anywhere along the rib cage, front, side, back, multiple locations, one side or both sides. So all of that into consideration, these tools will help. So first things first, let's talk about some of the equipment that I think is really useful to have on hand if you're doing this type of recovery. First, a recliner. Now I don't have a recliner here with me, but I've done some videos about recliner sleep. I'm gonna link those here. Having an electric recliner, I'm not gonna suggest the hand pull recliners as being as useful because that motion can be really, really difficult while recovering. But an electric recliner can be great for an easy place to sleep and rest early on in your recovery process. It's a really good idea to watch the video I'm linking here because it's gonna talk about pillow placement and where to have things to make sure that you're not causing any additional issues by sleeping in said recliner. But I'd say better than 50% of clients I work with for that first week or so are sleeping in some sort of recliner or a head adjustable bed. Now, if you don't have access to those and you're looking to sleep in a regular bed, I'm gonna show you how you can set that up as well. First things first, I'd recommend having a wedge. A wedge is a really important tool in this recovery process because laying flat on your back for at least a couple of weeks is going to be darn near impossible. So I have this wedge. It's a really um, relatively affordable. This is a great wedge because it has multiple positions so you can set the height um, however you feel most comfortable. It has the standard wedge height, but this one actually folds out. This is kind of cool. So you can actually have a lower head height and a slightly longer wedge. So depending on what you find most comfortable and most doable, you can use a wedge like this to modify that sleep position. So I do recommend something like this if you can afford that, or if perhaps you already have one on hand, it will be really, really useful. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna set it just like this in that standard height position. I also recommend if you have one of these wedges, adding some pillows. This is fairly firm, and for some people firm feels good, but for most they need a little extra cushioning early on in the recovery process. So I grabbed two relatively thin pillows, a slightly thicker one on top, slightly thinner one for the lower back, just to add a little bit of cushioning. You're gonna have to monkey with this a little bit to figure out what feels best for you. Every body is different, and in, depending on how you sustain those rib fractures, if you have other injuries going on, other soft tissue damage, you're gonna have to play with whatever works for you. But I find that this type of position to start can be a good place. The other things I recommend having on hand are the little pillow. This is something, if you've seen my sternal fracture video, I strongly recommend having a small, soft, this is just a pillow insert from my couch, um, and it works really well to just kind of compress against those tender ribs. I don't remember, I don't recommend wearing a wearable compression garment as those have really gone out of fashion as far as doctors not recommending them because they can actually reduce the uh, quality of the breaths that you're taking. And one of the biggest focuses of a rib recovery, rib injury recovery, is your breath, is your lungs, is, this, is your respiratory health. So you're going to be doing a lot of deep breathing and if you're wearing a compression garment, especially during restful periods, it's going to limit how good your breathing is. So I do strongly recommend avoiding that during rest times um, and switching over to having some sort of pillow to be able to use as compression during movement. Okay, so I would use a pillow like this wherever I had the most pain to kind of press against gently that area while I'm moving. And I'll show you how that looks in just a second. A few other things I have here, I have a standard bed rail. This is just an easy slides under the mattress, 
This will work in standard bed situations. It will not work in an adjustable height bed. So just be aware if that's what you're working with, this type of bed rail won't work for you. But if you have a standard bed, these are great to have as a place to kind of balance yourself, help with transitional movements, and just to be able to have like a cup holder, this little pocket here to keep things close to you because the worst thing is once you finally get comfortable and realize you can't reach your water or your phone or whatever it is. So having something like this or a bedside table, really good idea. The other thing I have here, and this is helpful for those who may find themselves in a bed that maybe isn't conducive to using a standard bed rail, is a bed ladder. Bed ladders are an awesome tool to help again with those transitional movements. They can help you get into a seated position. They can help you slide around in bed and they can be mounted anywhere, at the foot of the bed, sides, or even at the head of the bed to give you a place to push off and pull from. I did a video on bed ladders and how to install them and what they're used for right here. So I'll link that as well. I actually like setting up both if you can, because as many places you can grab and adjust yourself with, the better it'll require less assistance from another person. Another really important thing, a good ice pack. So you're going to be icing a lot when you're recovering from rib injuries. So I like to have an ice pack on rotation all the time available for you and having one at the bedside when you're about to get into bed is really important. I will show you how I use this. Okay, so let's talk about positioning. So for most people, laying on your back is going to be pretty much your only option. About three to four weeks into recovery, sometimes a little sooner if it's a less severe injury, you can start to roll up onto your side a little bit, but I'm gonna show you the back positioning first because it's the most common early on. So I'm gonna use my pillow. As we're set up here, I would pretend like this is a, a right-sided fracture if I could, because a right-sided fracture would mean I'd have this on my left side to use. If it was the other way around, I'd probably try to set it up on the other side of the bed if space allowed. So I'm gonna use my pillow here and I'm just going to congently compress against the pretend rib fractures on this side. And then what I'm gonna do is a very similar movement to what I would do if I had a back injury. I'm gonna to try to keep my body aligned, avoid twisting motions, because those are gonna send you through the roof. And I'm gonna use the, the rail here that I have to help guide me up onto my side initially. I'm not gonna spend much time there because I'm just going to pivot onto my back. And then I'm gonna gently, gingerly, scoop myself into what I can find is a comfortable position. So while I'm here like this, I can keep this compressed against my side for just a minute as I kind of catch my breath because that can be very painful. And then the ice. This is why I like having an ice pack ready to go at the bedside because 20 minutes of icing every hour while you're awake can make a huge difference in keeping the inflammation down. So I would then apply my ice pack. I may add a little bit of compression here with my, with my pillow and just kind of try to get comfortable. Another thing that I strongly recommend is having pain medication, whatever you're taking for managing your pain, on board before you attempt this. So if you're going to go to bed at a 9 p.m., try to have that medication in, in, in your body by 8.30. That way it's had time to kind of set in so that the pain isn't so severe once you get laid down that you have no chance of falling asleep. So make sure pain medication's on board, get your ice pack ready, have your pillow. Now I'll show you, I have this bed rail here and what's nice about having this bed rail is, or bed ladder, is that I can use it with my, with my non-injured side, we're pretending again in this scenario that my right side is injured, but I can use this ladder to, to kind of replace my core, because at this point I would imagine my core is pretty well shot. So I'm using this to help pull me into kind of an upright position like this so that I can then pivot and get back out of bed if I needed to. So that's where the bed ladder can come in really, really handy. Now I did say that you could potentially sleep on your side, and I do know that there are folks who can actually sleep on their injured side after a few weeks again, depending on the severity of the injury, because that, that side is going to kind of feel good to have a little compression on. So you can technically sleep on the injured side a few weeks into a recovery, but always check with your doctors because you don't want to lay on a um, really displaced fracture or if you've had some lung issues on that side, you don't want to lay on that right away. So definitely check with your doctor before attempting to sleep on the fractured side. But do know that some folks do that relatively soon. Another thing you can do is make sure that you plan out your, your blankets accordingly. I have a lot of people that struggle because they select too heavy of blankets early on. And remember, when you have rib fractures, pulling, pushing, those are gonna be really uncomfortable. 
So pulling a heavy blanket over yourself is a big problem. So start with light blanket layers. So have just light blankets that you can lay, pull on top of yourself easily. That can make a big difference. I've had a lot of people really hurt themselves trying to pull a heavy duvet cover over themselves while they're in bed. So starting with light blankets can it be another way you can save yourself a lot of pain and misery. All right, so there you have it. Several ideas for how to get yourself positioned for comfortable sleep following rib injury or fracture. I hope you got some value out of this video. I would love to hear your comments and questions down below. If you liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.